and we are back on the build phase. I'm Mr. Ben, and today I'm joined by a guest, Jarrell. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? All right, so like anytime I have somebody on the show for the first time, I like to take a little bit to kind of talk about their history with games, and, and you are not going to be an exception to this rule. So to start off here, can you kind of walk us through your early experience with games, card games, and what brought you to Versus System to PCG? Uh, okay, well, um, I was never really into, like, card games like that. Uh, you know, I played the typical board games, like Monopoly and stuff like that. Um, as I got older, um, there was friends that I was hanging out with that we, you know, kind of like the same stuff, like wrestling stuff like that. And they were playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And I was kind of like hesitant to play. I, I, don't, I didn't feel like it was interesting until I actually like got invested in it where my cousin bought a, a pack and we started playing and I got into it and I played from my teen years all the way until about 2000, roughly 2015. As for my journey with Versus, I played the original. Um, I remember hanging out with a friend and we kind of saw it at a, I think it was a GameStop or something. They were selling it and we're like, oh, it looks kind of interesting. and. We kind of got into it. We realized it was it had that flavor and similarity to Yu-Gi-Oh! So it kind of was like an easy transition from, from one game to the next. And it was great. Like, we enjoyed it. Uh, you know, a bunch of other friends got into it as well. And, you know, it was a sad day when they discontinued it. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree with that. Uh when the when the new verses came out, did you hop on it quickly, or were you uh, kind of of the camp? Well, where I was, where I was a little reluctant to buy back in. Uh, there wasn't DC. The game was a little bit different. Um, I eventually kind of got past all of that. But what was your kind of first reaction when you heard about the new verses coming out? Um, my thing was similar, to be honest. Um, I saw it. I saw like a lot of the changes. It looked very confusing with the levels and supporting characters. And it kind of, I, I was kind of disappointed, you know, um, like I didn't know where the game was going, what IPs they had. So I kind of like stood away for it for a while, but I always kept it like, uh, I still had like, I was still like following the pages. So I'll kind of see like, you know, add, the, the spoilers to the, the next sets, it, it kept, you know, in the background for me. Mm -hmm. And when the pandemic hit, uh, you know, I, I kept, you know, something, I had that itch, you know, to play a card game again, because I stopped playing Yu-Gi-Oh! for a couple of years. And I was just like, I kept looking at it, kept thinking about it, and I said, you know what, I'm going to get into it. And I was talking with a friend, I said, hey, dude, like, you should try this. Like, let's do this. And he goes, all right, let's let's do it. Let's do it. And I, I remember the first set I bought, I bought the base box. And then I bought, uh, this is when Fantastic Battles came out. And I was big on uh, Mr. Fantastic and the, the family, you know, the first family. So that's where I began. Starting the game with fantastic battles do you feel like that was a a good jumping on point for a new player or was some of the stuff in that box maybe a little uh overwhelming uh i would say it was a little it was a little tougher to understand but the base battle did did definitely help like i'm glad that i was i purchased both at the same time because i think if i would have just got fantastic battles it probably would have been a harder transition. But because it was it still had the similarities of the old verses, that this is why I was able to get into it um a little bit quicker. And I had a lot of practice, you know. I I would have my weekly meetups and keep playing and playing and playing and 
eventually, you know, we we invested in all the stuff. That is kind of how it works. You know, oh, I only yeah. need this one box to play. Yeah, that's all you need to get started. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then it became an addiction. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and, yeah. I kind of have like a divided mind on Fantastic Battles. On the one hand, I really love a lot of the things in that box. But it was also kind of sold to us as like, hey, this is a great place for new players to get started. And there's a lot of stuff in that box that is not new player friendly, in my opinion. Yeah, after looking back at it, I can see everybody's uh, their thought process on that. Yeah, that like, I don't. I don't really think. I I, I kind of agree with everybody that I don't think it is a really a starting point. But if you're a fan of something, you're just gonna want to get it, and that's how that was my thought process at the time. I sure. was like, ah oh, man, Fantastic Four. I was like, I'm so, I'm so into it, you know, with all the news at that time with Disney buying. 21st Century Fox, and we're going to get a Fantastic Four movie. So I was kind of in that, that headspace. And that's why I just jumped into it. I was like, this is the, like the newest set. And, you know, I just, you know, took the plunge. Well, and, and coming from old versus, uh, the Fantastic Family was treated very well in that game. And I think a lot of the old versus players have extremely fond memories of interacting with those characters, Doom in particular. Uh, at least for me personally, stands out as like one of the quintessential uh, old versus experiences. So seeing those cards come back, I'm sure there was a lot of pressure on Danny and Ben to get it exactly right, and that's hard to do. Yeah, I would, I I would say the same. Yeah, like you know, judging from old versus and the way they were introduced, me, I was one that was never really. I don't know. I wasn't really happy about the way they had certain cards back then for Fantastic Four, like the support. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, like I said, both games are very different. You know, they have their similarities, but they're different. But I feel this this time around, it, it for me, it, 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 um, it did justice for them. So it, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today, and actually something that's been kind of on my mind to promote for at least the last few weeks, a month or two, is you actually run another Versus 2 PCG Facebook group separate from the collective. So I stumbled across hey. this like maybe a month or two ago. I thought, oh my goodness, this is awesome, more Versus. So I want to kind of give you the floor for a minute to kind of talk about the group that you're running and and maybe the uh, the games that you post about your uh, your weekly Versus games and just kind of promote what you're doing there. All right, well, um, originally I did it because back in the day it was similar to what I used to do with Yu-Gi-Oh! I used to make like Facebook groups and invite friends and kind of have a, like a community, just us. But then this time around, I was kind of going to that same mindset. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to open this to everyone. I love this game. Um, I've seen what you guys have done in the collective. And, the you know, it's been a very positive community overall. Uh, I've had there's the experience of fan bases. I can there's a list and I'm not gonna even go through, but they're very toxic. Yeah. But for this community itself, it's not. And it's very different. And I know a lot of the people that I I invited to the group that I made, um, a lot of them is friends. And I I'm hoping to get them back in to a different card game because a lot of them were Yu-Gi-Oh players as well. And a lot of them has changed. Life goes on. There's, you know, children and marriage and, you know, life in general. So I try to like promote it to maybe inspire them to, to join and have a community because I hate to say it, but New York, being from New York City, the game has not been promoted enough for us. You know, there's no stores that sell the sets. You know, everything has to be purchased online, which, you know, I'm, I'm glad we have some accessibility, but I, I would want a bigger 
fan base in the city to know about the game, to expand it more. I'm, I'm, I don't shy away from promoting anything. You know, I listen to your stuff. I listen to Team Apex, uh, the New York Minute, you know, like so on and so forth. Like I'm always gaining knowledge from all you guys because, you know, this is this is a game that I, I truly enjoy. And I even like it more than the old versus. And it might be blasphemy from everybody, but that's my feeling towards it. There are definitely people who would get really up in their feelings hearing that, but honestly, I, I'm right there with you. I was very reluctant to admit that, but at this point, it, New Versus has actually had a longer run than, than the old Versus game. They've made a more stable game system. Uh, back in old Versus, I mean, it was what every other set they had to go through banning cards. Now, I have... <laughs> I do have some issues with game balance within this game as well, but it's much on a much lower degree than old versus was. Uh, they really did. I don't think they paid enough attention to putting out balanced cards. They were just trying to put out cards in that old game. And it, by the end, it really showed, particularly in that last set, they kind of broke the game engine with several effects. Yeah, I would agree. And I feel like this game is a lot more balanced than yeah. old versus. It, the old versus seems so chaotic, so just so out there. And don't get me wrong, it was fun. It was, you know, it was enjoyable. But comparing the two, I see that difference. And I'm like, I like the fairness. I like the, the more balance because I came from Yu-Gi-Oh! And what turned me off with Yu-Gi-Oh! was a lot of the changes, the things just went all over the place it became unfair it became like if you're not winning in one turn you lose and i was just like i can't be a part of a, a game like this it just there's no balance it's just chaotic so seeing versus two pcg just completely like a 180 kind of uh balance you know has a balanced form on that i i was all about and I'm still all about it. Yeah, and throughout the course of this game, when there have been problematic cards, they've done a pretty good job. Not a perfect job, but a pretty good job of kind of reining in some of those crazier cards and making sure that, and through formats, making sure we have at least relatively balanced environments to play in. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so... While I did want to specifically take a few minutes to talk about your uh, versus Facebook group, the main thing I wanted to talk to you about today was inspired by a comment you left on the recent post uh, made about AEW wrestling joining versus. And, and the specific post you made was critiquing the quality of the wrestling within AEW. And that kind of interested me to have, bring you on, have a conversation about wrestling in general, specifically AEW. But before we get into the nexus of this plus versus, why don't you just kind of run down your wrestling credentials as far as being a fan, uh, and then we'll talk about integrating this into uh, where it contacts with versus. Oh, uh, well, my origin is, I have been, I can say a lifelong fan of wrestling in general um i've had stories of even my parents when uh, my mother was pregnant with me that they went to a sporting event and you know the crowd was wild and i'm kicking in her stomach like i guess part of excitement or something and as i got older you know my dad exposed me to it and i just got into it and became a fan for a very long time and, um, you know, I've been through practically all the eras of wrestling until recent. And my comment in the group was not to be hostile. Like, I felt like my, my, the way my words came out was a little bit hostile, but it wasn't to be any, any malice. But that form of wrestling... Uh, it's just not, it's just not there for me. Well, let's, let's talk about AEW in specific. So, so given that you've got this long history of being a fan throughout your life, I'm assuming that's of like WWE. That's that 
I know basically nothing about wrestling. So if I say anything yeah. dumb here, I apologize in advance. Um, no, no problem. So, so my understanding is that AEW is kind of like the upstart independent organization that's trying to do things that WWE doesn't do well. They're trying to like fix those mistakes as an outside. That, I mean, that's my outside perspective as somebody who's a fan of the sport. Is that a fair way to look at AEW or do you have a different perspective on the organization as a whole? Um, at, on an outside view, that's, uh, that's like a synopsis of it. But a lot of it for me is coming from the wrestling that I used to enjoy because i don't really enjoy it as much as before um you know a lot of it was wrestling back then kind of did what it was meant to do was kind of dispend disbelief and nowadays the way things are being portrayed aw for one is there's no there's very lack of training so things just look chaotic. People are hurting themselves more and more. Um, and it feels like they are just doing things just to do it. And when it comes to wrestling, yes, it's, it's as you mentioned in your other podcast, um, that it, it is a, you know, it's, fake fighting but people do get hurt people do train people do those things but there's an art form for it there's a way where you tell a story based off of you doing things and there's a psychology to it and for wrestling companies like that they don't do those things they just do whatever they can to show off and it's just not something that I'm into. Do you feel like uh, WWE is still putting the emphasis on training and, and building these events in a non-chaotic way to the best they can? I mean, obviously injuries can happen anytime there's feats of athleticism. But I guess the, the core of my question is, is this an AEW specific grievance or is this a grievance with like the state of modern day wrestling as a whole? Um, well, like I said, every company has their issues. Um, you know, WWE itself, they, you know, they, there are things that people are not happy with the way they, uh, uh, feature certain superstars who they who fans want to really you know give them the shine and but they're very they're still very professional they do things accordingly they try to be very safe they try to do things that make more sense and outside of them a lot of other companies are kind of imitating each other so they're all doing just chaotic, chaotic things to try to like impress people, but it does nothing for it for anybody. You know, mostly everyone is just getting hurt. They're not going to be featured. You're not going to see them for a long time. And it's like, what is the point? You know, you, you're doing it for, for what purpose? And that's what turned me off from wrestling. I mean, were I to speculate, you know, if we're looking at AED as kind of a AEW as a startup organization, the attraction to doing things that are like flashy uh, for the sake of spectacle, just to capture attention, uh, I, I could see that being a powerful motivator if the slow, steady route isn't getting the kind of growth they want. I mean, again, I don't know. I'm just kind of speculating here. Uh, but is that kind of a maybe a fair way to kind of describe the situation where the established wrestling organization maybe has a little more money, has a little more uh, of a safety net to kind of put these training pieces and, and better choreography kind of in place? Is that kind of a fair? It, I think that's what you're telling me, but I don't want to put words in your mouth, you know? Yeah, um, I would say that the problem with them is that the company was based off of wrestlers who couldn't really get the shine they wanted. They thought they were bigger than what people saw them as. Like they couldn't make it to the big leagues. So they band together 
and made a company and should try to do it. They, I felt it feels like they're doing it out of spite to say, hey, you know, I can, I can do it. I can be who I want to be. And no one can tell me otherwise. And instead of taking a professional, uh, you know, professional look, at least try it. They just want to say, hey, you know, we don't need to listen to nobody. Kind of like that spoiled, entitled um, mindset. And it shows. It shows with their product. It shows just how bad it looks, you know, and you know, they're trying to be an alternative to the big leagues and it just really shows how bad it looks. And it looks like all this money that's going into it, it looks like somebody doing it on their own that's not paying any money. And it's not a good look and it just it just hurts wrestling in general. Have there been any storylines or events that they've put on that have, despite all of your criticisms, have captured your attention and that you thought were cool? I tried to to watch and I just couldn't. It just it was too cringy for me. Okay. And yeah, I just couldn't. All right. So to move into AEW being featured in verses. Now, I think everybody, even the people who are big fans of this idea, I think everybody can acknowledge it's a little weird. It's it's a little strange to talk about uh, CM Punk going toe to toe with Spider Man. It like the mental image of that is a little strange. But we're gonna set that piece aside and just kind of focus on the mechanics of how this would work. With regard to the characters and and kind of the way the story arcs within wrestling work, what are some challenges or, or outright problems that you think Upper Deck and Super Awesome Games would be facing in order to take this subject matter and get it to work in verses? Honestly, I don't know. Um, just like you were, what you were saying, is it, for me, it doesn't make any sense. You know, people have the argument, let's look at Buffy, let's look at X-Files, let's look at Aliens and Predators. But at least with those things, they can be incorporated in a way where it makes sense for it. For example, let's look at uh, X-Files. You got Fox Mulder, who has a gun, and it's a character that can shoot, so he has range. What are these athletes, these wrestlers, going to have as their stats, their, their, you know, mechanics that we have in the game? What are they going to have? It doesn't, it doesn't fit. Like, all these other IPs that we're getting, Mortal Kombat, the boys, you know, even the existing, made sense based off of the fantasy element, the cartoon element, the comic element. But to have wrestlers in a in a game system the way it's portrayed, for me, it doesn't make any sense. Well, that's kind of interesting because it sounds like the game mechanics don't really matter. Like even if the cards as cards play well and do fun things, that it's the theme feels to it feels enough out of place that it's kind of breaking the the spell or breaking the i was going to say realism but that's probably the wrong word when we're talking about superheroes and and supernatural stuff uh but what i'm hearing from you is that it sounds like the core of your criticism is that it doesn't fit uh thematically and it's it's the flavor issue more than it is anything to do with potential game mechanics is is that fair to say i would say i would say that yeah if this was wwe then it sounds like you might even have the same critique because while uh wwe at least it, it in your estimation puts out a superior product we'd still have the same problem of it's a little bit weird of dudes in their underwear fighting for a belt now having to fight Dr. Doom. Yes. Yes. It just, I just feel like the theme of it just doesn't fit. 
you know, there are other IPs out there that fit. you can make an argument that would fit. But this just just seems too out of place. And it just, I don't know, it doesn't feel like it should be part of the game. It does seem like a weird choice. I cannot deny that. Uh, as as much as I've been uh, almost simping for the idea, just because I'm excited about the idea of fans of wrestling now turning their attention to Versus and what that could mean for our player base and, and you know eyes on the game. But I cannot in any way make a reasonable defense of how wrestling dudes fit into, and, and women, I, should, I shouldn't be gendered about it. Wrestlers come in... in all genders, uh, but it does seem incongruous. It does seem like it doesn't quite fit. Um, I think photographic, it makes a little more sense because at least there you've got X-Files, you've got Buffy, you're going to have the boys, and at least within the the show version of the boys, the boys themselves are just humans. Uh, no spoilers for future episodes. Um so that at least I think it would be a harder sell if they were trying to do this into the illustrated universe. Does that make any difference for you? I, I just feel it doesn't fit either universe. To, and it, for me, it just doesn't seem right. And like you were saying, you know, how do these characters go against other characters? Like, it just doesn't seem like it, it would necessarily fit for what the game does. And... I don't know, it's just, like, for me, I feel that the this IP, yeah, will get attention for wrestling fans to see, but I don't feel like it would push the needle enough to make it worth having it uh, be an IP for the game. Because if, truthfully, if you're not a person who are into card games, in that manner, uh, it's not going to really push the needle enough that it's going to keep, I feel, keep consistent players. Now you have people who buy it because they're fans of, of the wrestling and want to see that, but I don't know, it just doesn't feel like it will push the needle. It is kind of a two groups that don't seem like natural allies. Like the Venn diagram mm-hmm. of dueling card game fans and wrestling fans it doesn't intuitively feel like the overlap between those circles would be that much but then again if we look at the historical evidence something like the what was it called smackdown or raw deal uh the wwe card game that sold well and even after it was canceled it continues to to this day have fans and people playing it online so there there are definitely some percentage of wrestling fans who also like to play around with cardboard now Will that translate into them wanting to play with cardboard that has Buffy the Vampire Slayer on it? That I don't know. Yeah. That's, you know, that's been my dilemma too about it. Because, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot and it's just like, is this going to really keep players? Like, I'm all for this game to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But, but you know, I feel like... <laughs> We got to draw the line somewhere. And it's just, for me, this is, ain't it. I don't know. Like, I could be, I could be in the minority. I can, I can be in the majority of this, but it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't sit well with me. When this first came up a couple of years ago, uh, when Upper Deck signed with AEW and started doing the collectible cards, uh, a friend of mine, Peter, said, you know, oh, this means we're going to get it in verses. And my initial reaction was, that is ridiculous. Like, that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, and now here we are actually confronting it. And I'm trying to think about ways that they could use wrestling to do something unique. And both battlefields and terrains, these kind of game mode cards that we've got in the last few crossover issues, if we got a you know, squared circle battlefield that maybe changed some rule of the game and made it feel more like wrestling... Or if there was like a Royal Rumble style, like a tag team way to play. If they gave us some wrestling specific variants of verses that you could maybe play with. Yeah, you could use other characters from other universes. But let's, for the purposes of this example, let's say you and your buddies get a box of these AEW cards. And you're able to play 
using the core versus engine without bringing in these other elements and just play those cards against each other. As a fan of both wrestling and versus, does that have appeal for you? Like the idea of just kind of within the box having like a versus experience with wrestling? Oh, honestly, I'm still just completely just doesn't, I don't know. I, I can't, I, I, I've been trying to find scenarios where I was like, okay, this, this fits, this is okay. And I'm just so just against it. And, you know, maybe in the time, when the time comes and it does come out and, you know, maybe I'll be eating my words. Like, who knows? But I don't know. I just don't see it fitting. It just, it just like completely out there. You know, sure. it's just like, it's like apples and, and a hand shot. Like, it just, it's, it's like, it's not like two fruits or something. It's just completely out there. And that's totally fair. You know, I think them putting out sets that don't necessarily work for every player as long as they work for some players it's probably okay if you know, it's set a doesn't work for me but set b doesn't work for you like i don't think there's anything wrong with that and i wanted to give some space on the show for a community voice who has like deep reservations and criticisms of this idea because you're definitely not alone you're not the only person who sees how weird this is and is kind of struggling to make sense of this choice. Because, I, I mean, I'm mostly cool with it, but I, I agree with you. It is weird. <laughs> so before we wrap anything up, uh, or before we wrap things up here, is there any other kind of parting thoughts that you have on Versus as a whole or about this AEW set in specific? I, I think we've kind of covered all the stuff that I had written down that I wanted to get to, but before we go into promotions and shout outs, just is there anything else you wanted to touch on? To be honest, you know, I'm just like everyone else, waiting on previews, waiting on the new sets, waiting on, you know, the IPs, and just sitting around waiting. <laughs> um, like I said, I, I'll, wait, I'll wait as long as I have to, you know, depending on what it is and what strikes my interest. But I'm a fan of, the, of this game, and I'm going to purchase whatever they bring out to me. Who's your favorite main character out of the House of X box? House of X. All right. I've been playtesting so far. I really enjoy Magneto. It's very interesting uh, character. It, it, it can really get really big fast. And um, when the way you can build a deck... You know, you, his his uh main effects are gonna you're gonna really draw into everything you need. But I was actually know, surprised with both yeah, Professor play, X I'm and Magneto. Yeah, I'm still playtesting like the other main you know, the other MCs, but you know, he he surprised me a lot. Yeah, that pay a yellow and it to get Brotherhood and X Men cards just added to your hand uh, performed a lot better than I anticipated it would. Yeah, it it was just I played a couple of games with him, and when I would activate the effect, I would have all characters <laughs> getting drawn. I'm like, okay, this helps me even more now, and you know, I would have my my setup for the game. I would have my drops for each turn. It's, it, it, I build it pretty well. All right. Well, I think we're here at the end. So I want to hand you the mic to plug, promote, shout out anything that you would like to uh, uh, mention here before we wrap things up. And uh, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, well, like uh, we said in the beginning, my name is Jarrell Fontanez. Um, I've been a member since the pandemic. Um, I have Facebook, face, face back, Facebook group called Versus System to PCG. Everyone is welcome. I put up um, 
I put up everything. I promote everyone's uh, podcasts or videos. Um, I'm here in New York City trying to get this game to be promoted more. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm all in for the game. You know, whatever needs to be done, I'll promote. I will shout out. Um, I'm here for for everyone. And, you know, I'm just happy that we have a great community. Well, hey, I really appreciate you coming on to the show, taking the time, but also knowing that I was going to kind of push you on your opinion a little bit. Uh, that can sometimes feel a little stressful. So I, I appreciate you uh, dealing with all of my questions and all of my poking and prodding at your uh, your opinions on the wrestling set that's upcoming. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah no problem. All right. Well, uh, once this set comes out, maybe we'll have to have you come back on and see what your thoughts are once you actually have a chance to get your hands on the cards and if that softens or or hardens your opinion on this topic. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oof. that's going to be interesting. All right. We'll, we'll make that for a plan in August. Uh, at, as always, I want to give a shout out to all my patrons. They help support the show. If you like what we're doing here, patreon.com slash the build phase. And until next time, go win some games. <laughs>